What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on NixOS Flakes. Even though Flakes are still technically marked experimental, they are stable enough that most advanced users rely heavily on them. In short, Flakes let you pin package versions, so even if something upstream breaks, your setup won't. You're in full control of when and what gets updated. At the end of this guide, you will no longer be using channels, and you'll be ready to deploy a NixOS Flake to multiple systems. Today we're going to show how to set up Flakes using NixOS and show a few ways on how to install and configure programs in NixOS using a Flake as your config file. Let's get into it. Alright, for the installation process, let's go ahead and head over to nixos.org and click download. Normally I'm a big fan of the minimal installation ISOs because, as I said before, it's just like 10 shell commands and you're ready to go, but for purposes of today's tutorial, we're going to go with the KDE Plasma GUI installer. If you're interested in seeing how to install NixOS using the minimal ISO, check out my previous NixOS installation tutorial. So let's grab this 64-bit AMD download ISO file. Alright, the first step is to load up this ISO image and go down to this NixOS Plasma LTS installer and just hit enter. Alright, so we have this KDE Plasma Calamari install wizard here, so we're going to go ahead and run through this. This is basically a Next simulator, so click Next there and we're going to set our time zone. For my situation, I'm in Los Angeles, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit Next. Keyboard's going to be default for me, so my name is Tony. And my password is going to be 123. We're going to uncheck this box to require strong passwords. We are going to use the same password for our root account. Go ahead and hit next. And here we're going to select Plasma. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to be using this desktop environment. However, I strongly encourage checking out something more minimal like i3 or DWM. Or even on the Wayland side of things, you can check out Hyperland or DWL or something like that. Those type of minimal window managers are going to secure you longevity and really allow you to be more consistent with keybinds in the long term but as I said for the purpose of this tutorial we are going to use this plasma desktop environment so again Richard Stallman would not be happy here but we are going to check this box for unfree software because we may need some proprietary drivers now if you know you don't need any proprietary drivers or anything like that you can go ahead and leave this box unchecked but that discussion is going to be for another video let's go ahead and click next and today we're going to be using the default partition scheme here by just selecting erase disk and we will put a swap on with no hibernate. We're going to skip the encryption for today because again this video is about flakes. It's not about encryption but, but you can feel free to check out my Ardix installation tutorial to learn more about encryption. All right let's go ahead and click next and this all looks good here so we'll go ahead and click install. Let that rip. I'm gonna let this finish and I will see you in a minute. Alright, that looks like the installation is ready to go. So let's go ahead and restart now and hit done. And here we see right off the bat the NixOS system D screen. And we'll take a note later on this, but this tells us which NixOS version we are on. This is where you're going to be able to revert back to a previous state if need be. And again, we'll talk more about that later. So let's jump right into this by hitting enter on this NixOS. And there we go. We see the SDDM greeter screen for KDE Plasma. Looks like we are on Wayland, which is great. Let's jump right into it. Let's log in with our password that we created. All right, beautiful. So the first thing that I want to do here is jump right into a terminal. So let's do that here. On Plasma, we have console as the default terminal. So we can open that by hitting the super key and searching for console. And there it is. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the root user here by typing SU. And we can clear that. And let's change directory to Etsy NixOS. Now, if we look at this directory, we do see configuration.nix and hardware configuration.nix. We're not going to be touching hardware configuration.nix because that's just going to be very specific for whatever hardware you're on. But configuration.nix is where we're going to be editing all of the programs and all of the system information. So let's go ahead and open that file here. And what we're going to do to open that is we're going to type kate configuration.nix because we don't actually have Vim installed yet and I refuse to use Nano. So the first thing I need to do is actually install Vim. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down with my mouse for the last time in this video. And in the environment system packages section, I'm gonna add Vim. And I'm also gonna add ghost TTY, 
Normally I install something like Alacrity or ST, but I figured I'd shake things up for this tutorial and use Ghost TTY. Now this is the Ghost TTY documentation page. I'll drop a link to this below the subscribe button, but this is gonna be great because there's really zero configuration required and Ghost TTY out of the box is pretty good. So we'll go ahead and install that. Now one helpful resource I like to look at when I'm installing packages on NixOS is mynixos.com. And for me, I can use this to figure out what the package is named. So for Ghost TTY, I just search Ghost TTY here and it looks like it's just Nix packages Ghost TTY. So that's great. We can just slap that right into the environment.system packages list and be good to go. Now, if you're not somebody who's comfortable using something like Vim, feel free to just use Kate for the rest of this tutorial or just install your preferred text editor here. So whether that's VS Code, Emacs, Helix, what have you. You can just add that to that system packages list. And in this NixOS config file, that's where you're gonna put the name of programs that you would like to install on your setup. And again, we're at mynixos.com. And if you are somebody who uses Helix, for example, we'll just search Helix. And it looks like the name of that package is just Helix. If you're a VS Code guy, VS Code, Looks like that package is just called VS Code. So you just would take the name of that package and put it right in this list here. So we just type VS Code, Helix, what have you. For me, I'm just gonna be using Vim today. So all I need to do is save this file and rebuild NixOS. So I went ahead and saved that file here. I'm back in the terminal here. And now I can run NixOS rebuild switch. And that's going to go ahead and install those packages that we just specified. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, looks like that's good to go and test that by just typing vim and there we go beautiful we have access to vim let's go ahead and move on to the next section all right let's go ahead and close console here and let's open up ghosty or ghost tty however you want to pronounce it and there we go so we've got ghosty here beautiful jetbrains mono default font looking good now let's go back to the root user here with su let's get our password going and let's go back to that directory etsy nixos and again, we see these configuration.nix file and we see the hardware configuration.nix file. So let's open up that configuration.nix file again. And for me, I'm gonna use Vim for that. So Vim configuration.nix. And again, for you guys, if you don't wanna use Vim, you can use VS Code, Kate, whatever you installed just now. And here we see that file again. So I went ahead and stripped a lot of the comments out of this file just to make it more condensed so I can explain things better and give you guys more real estate on the screen recording. So let's go ahead and navigate down to hostname. And I'm gonna change my hostname here to NixOS Flakes BTW because I'm using NixOS Flakes, by the way. And you can change your host name to whatever you want, but that's just what I'm gonna go with. And let's go ahead and enable Nix Flakes now here. So go ahead and enter a new line and type nix.settings.experimental features. And we're gonna make that equal to bracket nix command because we need access to the nix commands. We're gonna be using that to initialize our first flake. And flakes, close that out and ensure we add a semicolon there. Looks like that's good to go. So we can go ahead and save this and quit that file. And clear that and we can run nixos rebuild switch. And that is going to enable flakes on our system. All right, let's clear that. Now we have enabled flakes. We're in that Etsy Nix OS directory. We have Nix command available. So let's go ahead and type Nix flake init. And that's going to initialize our first flake. That's gonna be flake.nix. So let's check that file out. It's gonna be vim flake.nix. And this is, as the description says, a very basic flake. I'm gonna clean up some of this white space here. And now we have a situation where we're looking at a file that we don't really know what it does. We don't know what it says or means, but we're gonna explain a little bit of this. And now we are on the NixOS official Flakes wiki here, and we do see the Flake init template. And again, this file looks a little bit confusing at a glance. It's got inputs, it's got outputs, etc. I'm not gonna get too technical, but to make sense of it, all it's going to be doing is pulling in a specific version of Nix PKGs and using that to build your system config. Nothing more, nothing crazy. So let's jump into it. And as we see here on the NixOS wiki under the NixOS system configuration, defining NixOS as a flake section. We are gonna look at this example flake and use this block here for our outputs. So we can go ahead and delete these lines here. 
and just add NixOS configurations, NixOS-flakes-btw, because that's the name of my host name. And we're gonna set that equal to nixpackages.lib.nixos system. And within that, we are going to set the modules to dot slash configuration dot nix. And so top down, what this file does for us is we're pulling from the unstable branch of nix packages which means all of our packages are coming from that branch, but which packages get installed is still gonna be defined in our configuration.nix file. So we're telling the flake to use configuration.nix as our system config module. And here you can specify other modules. So for example, if you're gonna use home manager, which I highly recommend, and you should check out my home manager tutorial video if you're interested in setting that up, you could slap that in here as another module. But for today, we're just gonna use configuration.nix as our only module. Go ahead and save this flake here and quit. If we take a look at our directory, we have configuration.nix, flake.nix, and the hardware configuration.nix files. Since our flake is in etsy slash nixos, and the hostname in our flake.nix file matches our actual hostname, and we can check that by typing hostname, we do see that it says NixOS Flakes, by the way. We can just run nixos rebuild switch, and it will auto detect everything and generate our flake.lock file. So let's go ahead and do that. nixos rebuild switch. And there you go. We're downloading the unstable version of Nix packages. I'll let that finish and I will see you guys in a minute. All right, that's complete. And now we've got our flake.lock file set up. So before we talk about that flake.lock file, I want to say one thing about the host name. So please note, if your host name is different in the flake than your system host name, you're going to need to specify it with that NixOS rebuild switch command. And the way to do that is simply to append the host name to the flake parameter like so. But for me in my situation, I've set up the flake.nix file to be pointing to my actual system host name. So we're good to go. Let's clear this and let's take a look at that flake.lock file. So what is this? Basically, flake.lock records exactly which version of Nix packages and any other Flake inputs you're using down to the specific commit. That means that every package in your system is now locked in time. So if I run Nix Flake update, that should update the flake.lock file. And once that flake.lock file is updated, I would run nixos rebuild switch again. And it's in theory gonna take new versions of new packages. But since I just installed all these packages, we've got nothing to update here. It's gonna be Nix Flake Update and Nix OS Rebuild Switch. Now, if you're coming over from Arch, that's gonna be the equivalent for you of the sudo pacman-syu command. Or if you're coming over from a Debian-based distribution, it's gonna be your sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade commands. And that'll come in handy later when you need to update your packages. Let's go ahead and clear that. The beautiful thing about these flakes is that now if I wanna use the exact same setup on another machine or clone it six months from now, I can just copy the flake.lock file and get the same package versions. So not only will I have the same packages, I'll have the same versions of the same packages. This means that if I have a system in a working state, I can hand off this flake.lock to one of you guys or to myself on my laptop and I can sleep well knowing that that system will work exactly as, as it should. So let's go ahead and install a few more programs and we will jump into the next step, which is version controlling the flake setup. All right, let's jump into that configuration.nix file again. And because we've specified that system packages variable in our flake, it is going to be pulling these packages from that nixos unstable branch. So let's go ahead and add a couple programs here. We need git to version control these. We're gonna need tldir to show off that. Let's get some other pretty handy programs. Let's get xclip and let's go ahead and grab bat. And these are some very minimal programs here, and we're gonna pull all these from that NixOS unstable branch of the Nix packages repository. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. Save and quit that file. And let's go ahead and run NixOS rebuild switch. One more time, beautiful. Take a look at some of those programs. Let's take a look at bat. Let's run bat on the flake.nix. And there we go. We've got bat installed, which is a nice little program that is a drop-in replacement for cat. It prints the file to the terminal and has some nice syntax highlighting and line numbers, and that's beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and clear that. Let's move into how people actually use flakes. Now, most people don't store their flakes or their config file in Etsy NixOS. Now that is the default location, but people tend to put that in a dot .files directory so they can share it with others or reproduce it on other systems using version control in their own user. So let's go ahead and start the process of doing that. Let's go ahead and exit the root environment here. And let's make a new directory here for these config files. Tilde slash nixos flakes, by the way. 
All right, we're in there. Now let's copy the necessary files into that new directory. So we'll do sudo cp etsy nixos star just to get everything. And we'll move that into nixos flakes, by the way. And there's that beautiful password icon. And let's run tree on that new directory. And there we go. Now you'll see we do have that hardware configuration.nix file. We don't need to be version controlling that because every hardware is gonna have different configuration with that file. So let's go ahead and work around that. Let's go into that directory and let's open that configuration.nix file. And we need to change this path to explicitly tell us to point to Etsy Nix OS hardware configuration.nix. So that'll import the hardware configuration file directly from the Etsy Nix OS directory. And that way we don't actually have to version control this hardware file. Cause like I said, that's gonna be machine specific. So let's go ahead and save and quit that file. Now that we've changed the path of the hardware configuration file to explicitly point to Etsy Nix OS, we can just remove this file from this directory. We don't need it anymore. So let's just rm hardware configuration.nix. Now we can do a git init to initialize a git repo here. And just to be safe, let's make this git ignore file. So let's echo hardware configuration.nix. Let's output that into a dot git ignore file. And let's do git add dot. And we'll do a git commit dash m first flay commit, by the way. Now I went ahead and created the repository on my GitHub. So we'll do a git remote add Tony HTTPS github.com slash Tony banters nixos flakes btw.git. And we'll do a git remote dash v to go ahead and list that out. Make sure that looks good and it does look good and clear that. And we should be able to do a git push Tony master. So I'll go ahead and type my username here. My password is going to be super secure. So I'm just gonna fast forward here. All right, we have pushed our changes to that branch and we are good to go. And now we see that repository on GitHub. We've got our nixos flake.nix and we've got our flake.lock file. So we're good to go. So we're ready to move on to the next step. And now we're ready to kind of showcase the power of a flake. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this machine here and open up nixos on a different machine. All right, so I have opened up a separate Nix machine that I've used previously, and I'm going to show how easy it is to reproduce the exact same setup from that flake file we just created. So let's go ahead and log in here. I'm going to start X on this, and this looks like a Qtile setup I made a while ago. Now I'm going to open up a terminal here. So I've got Git installed on this machine. So if you don't have Git installed, that's pretty much the only thing you're going to need to install is Git. But once you've got Git installed, which is great, you can do this pretty much from a terminal or a TTY. You're going to go ahead and type git clone HTTPS colon colon. This is my repo here, github.com nixos flakes, by the way. We'll go ahead and CD into nixos flakes, by the way. And looks like we've downloaded those files successfully. So we'll go ahead and type sudo nixos rebuild switch. We'll pass in that impure flag. Pass in the flake argument and do a dot here. And now we're setting up the system configuration with the flake that was just dropped in from that git repository. A couple things you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your host name is either set correctly in the flake or set correctly on your system. And if you don't wanna use the impure flag, you can simply edit the configuration file to point to the hardware file. And you can just move your hardware configuration file directly into this directory. But for now, I'm gonna let this finish and I will see you briefly. And there we go. It looks like it rebooted our system for us and we're ready to log right in. So, so we do see that SDDM greeting screen. We can ensure that that's definitely coming from that configuration file because we didn't have any greeting screen on the other machine. So let's just type one, two, three, because that was a password set. And there we go. We're definitely on the exact same system. Confirm that. Let's type ghost. There's ghosty. We've got ghosty. We've got vim. What else did we download? Looks like we installed teal deer. Let's see if we've got that. Got teal deer vim, and there we go. We did install xclip so we can run teal dr on xclip. <laughs> awesome. So we just within five minutes cloned our repo, um, took the flake, just loaded up a different system, and now it's the exact same system as the one before. So we have two systems reproducible within minutes, and you guys can take this flake and do the same exact thing on your own setup. This is barely scratching the surface of flakes and the power of what you can do with flakes, but I do want to give you guys a quick overview on the very generic basic setup of it. There will be a final part to this series that couples home manager flakes and kind of more stuff you can do with both of those and how synergistic they are. So stay tuned and we'll see a part four of this. But yeah, this was the Flakes tutorial. So thanks so much for checking out the video. If you have anything Linux related or any other distributions you want me to cover, just drop it in the comment section and I'll put it in the pipeline. And it wouldn't be a proper video if I didn't end it with an obligatory NeoFetch.
I do want to thank the producer of today's tutorial. His name is iFanatical. Um, he dropped a $10 super chat in the comment section of the DWM video. Since this channel is just a hobby channel for me, people like this are really the producers of, uh, of the content. So iFanatical, thanks so much for producing this video. See you guys next time.